Hello, welcome to EC Electronics. Today's class, we are going to see the finite word length effects in DSP. The finite word length effects are happening because of varying or changing the length of your data. How the finite word length effects is happening, we will see later. Before that, we are going to see the number representations used in DSP. Okay, so there are basically three types of number representations. Number representations are three types. First one is fixed point number representation. Second one is floating point number representation. And the third one is block floating point. Now, this fixed point number representation uh, indicates that the point is fixed. It is having a fixed point and hence it is called fixed point number representation. Then floating point number representation is using a mandisa and exponent and block floating point representation is actually a combination of this fixed point and floating point. Okay, so we are going to see these three in detail. We don't have to study much about the block floating point, but we have to discuss uh, mainly about fixed uh, point and floating point. Okay, so let us see what is fixed point number representation and what are the types. So we are going to see the fixed point number representation. Fixed point. So this fixed point number, number representation consists of mainly three types. First one is sign magnitude type. Sign magnitude. Second one is once complement. Then third one is twos complement representation. So these are the three categories of fixed point number representation. That is, we are going to represent the fixed point numbers using either sign magnitude form or once complement form or twos complement form. These are very basic things. Uh, anyway, let us see how these uh, three combinations or three representations are being done. First one is the sign magnitude form. In the sign magnitude form, the sign magnitude form. So in the sign magnitude form, we are using one bit to represent the sign. Now which bit is used to represent uh, the sign is the MSB of the number is used to indicate whether it is a positive number or a negative number. For example, there is a 9 and it is represented in the 5 digit or 5 bit number representation, 5 bit sign magnitude form like this. In the 5 bit sign magnitude form, it is represented as 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. We know that 1, 0, 0, 1 is the representation of 9 in binary and we use a 5 bit sign magnitude representation and hence this is the uh, representation for your 9 which is plus 9. Now if your number is minus 9 then it is indicated like 1 1 0 0 1. Now it is very clear that this two numbers differs only by this bit right. Okay so this is the bit which indicates the sign. Okay, so the MSB indicates the, the sign of the number. The MSB is set to 1, it indicates that it is a negative number. If the MSB is 0, it indicates that it is a positive number. So the positive number and the negative number differs by a sign bit, which is a MSB bit. Okay, now let us consider another example you, for the sign magnitude representation. Another example for sign magnitude representation, it is plus 1.75. And it is indicated using 0, 1.110000. This is your MSB bit. Since it is a positive number, this, uh, this is set as 0. Now, if the number is negative, how will it change? Only there is a change in the uh, MSB bit. It is set as 1. Rest all the numbers are same. So, this is how a negative 1.75 is indicated. Now, this is very clear that there is a sign bit at there is magnitude bits. The sign bit is set as 1 if the number is negative. It is set as 0 if the number is positive. Now this is called your sign magnitude format. Now what is once complement format? Once complement representation. Uh, let us consider that 0.875 in binary is represented as 
zero point one 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 zero zero zero. Okay. In the once complement format, what we are going to uh, do in order to indicate a minus zero point eight seven five, we are going to complement all these bit. That is. Uh, the uh, first bit is the zero. It is converted as one. Then there there are three ones. It is converted as zero zero zero. Again, three, uh, these three zeros are, con are converted as one one one. So all the bits are being complemented here. So this is called your ones complement format. So in a ones complement format, in order to uh, convert or represent a positive number as a negative number, just complement all the numbers. That is the ones complement format. Now what is Two's complement format. In the two's complement form, just a small change is there. Just add a one to the LSB bit of the one's complemented form. So this is the one's complemented format of minus 0.875. In order to convert it into the two's complement format, just add a one to this. Okay, that is minus 0.875 in the two's complement format will be. Just one added to this number. That is one plus one is zero. Carry one again. One plus one is zero. Carry one. One plus one is zero. Carry one again. A one. So zero zero point one. So this is your representation of minus point eight seven five in the two's complement format. Okay. So this is one's complement form and two's complement form. In the one's complement format. In order to represent a negative number, we are going to take the complement of all the bits. That is, converting of zeros is ones and ones is zeros. Complementing. Then, in the two's complement format, what we are going to do is we are going to add a one to the LSB bit. Okay, so that is happening in the two's complement format. Okay, so I hope this is clear. Now let us uh, see how the addition and subtraction is done in the fixed point number representation. Next, we are going to see how to do the uh, addition and subtraction in uh, fixed point number representation. So, in fixed point number representation, in order to add these two numbers, convert them as binary and add. Okay, so uh, the binary format of 0.5 is 0 0.100 is a binary number representation, and for and for 0.125, it is 0 0.001. So, add these two numbers. And you will get 0 0.1001. So this indicates a 0 0.625 in decimal. So the answer will be 0 0.625 in decimal representation. And if you add uh, the fixed point numbers, the addition is performed like this. Now in order to subtract a number from another number, just take the two's complement of this number. That is since this number is negative, Take the two's complement and add with the first number. So that is how we can perform the subtraction. Okay, so uh, what is this uh, 0 0.5? It is 0 0.100 in binary format. And for 0 0.25, 0 0.25 is represented as 0 0.010. And minus uh, 0.25 is Take the two's complement form. So first take the one's complement that is 1.101 1 then add a 1 to make it as two's complement form. Okay so it will be 1 plus 1 is 0 carry 1. So 1 1 point 1. So this is the two's complement representation 1.110. 1 now this is the two's complement representation of minus 0 0.25 right. So take this and add with this number. So 1.110 1, uh, adding these two numbers you will get uh, the value as 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 and 1. Okay, so this is a carry. So the result is uh, 0 0.010, right? So this indicates a 0 0.25 in decimal number representation. So, in order to uh, subtract a number from another number, take the negative numbers to complement form and add with the other number. Okay, so that is how you have to perform the uh, subtraction. So, these are the simple things you should know about the fixed point number representation. So, we have seen the various types of fixed point number representation that is sign magnitude form, uh, once complement and two's complement form. 
Now you are going to see the floating point number representation. Here each numbers are represented in the format. Uh, the floating point number say uh, f is represented as 2 raised to c into m. So this c is called the exponent term and m is called the Manchester term. Okay, so this is a 2 raised to power term and this is a m. And the value of m, of m will be in the range 0 0.5 less than or equal to m less than 1. So the value of m will be always in between this range. That is greater than 0 0.5 and less than 1. Or greater than or equal to 0 0.5 and less than 1. So that is the range of your Mandisa. Now we have to uh, make the Mandisa in this range. And, and for that condition we have to select this exponent term. That is we have to fix the uh, range for that and accordingly we have to choose our 2's uh, power or our exponent term. Okay, so let us see that. So in order to convert the 4.5, for example, I am taking a number 4.5. I need to represent it using a floating point number representation. For that, first I am going to uh, take my C as 1. So it will be 2 raised to 1 into F. Now, Divide this 4.5 by 2 and see whether uh, the value of m will uh, be in this range. So if it is greater than this 1 or if it is not in this range, again take 2 raised to 2. Okay, now again perform division of 4.5 by 2 raised to 2 is 4. And again see whether the Mandisa range is in this uh, range, that is Mandisa will fall in this range or not. Again, if it is not possible, now choose another number that is 2 raised to 3. Likewise, you have to select your exponent term to fix your mantissa in this range. So, we have to, in order to um, do the floating point representation, we have to only concentrate on this mantissa. That is, it, it should come in this range and accordingly, we have to select our exponent term. Okay, so if you convert this 4.5, you will get 2 raised to 3 into 0 0.5625. Okay, so this is the expression. So here if you see the value of m is greater than 0 0.5 and less than 1. So it is correct. And the value of c or exponent is 2 raised to 3. That is c is equal to 3. Now for 6.5, if you convert it accord, uh, similarly, you will get 2 raised to 3 into 0 0.8. Here again the value is less than what? Greater than 0 0.5. So this is how you represent numbers in floating point number representation. Now how to perform the addition and subtraction of this floating point number representation? It is a bit difficult because for that you have to make the uh, exponent term of both the numbers equal. That is for example if there are two numbers 2 raised to 3 is 0 0.628 plus 2 raised to 2 is 0.725 means make these two exponents as equal to either 2 raised to 2 or 2 raised to 3. Both exponent terms should be equal only then addition is possible. So it is little bit difficult. Okay so this is all about the floating point number representation and about the block floating point number representation. In block floating point number representation, the numbers are divided into various blocks and each block is allotted an uh, exponent term. And that, uh, that block of numbers will be having a, a common exponent term. So that is actually a combination of fixed point and floating point number representation. Okay, so that is all, uh, that is all you should know about the block floating point. You have to mainly study about fixed point and floating point. Okay, so this is all about the number representations. Now let us see what are the finite word length effects in DSP. So there are two types of finite word length effects in DSP. That is uh, the word length effects due to uh, truncation and due to rounding. So uh, in truncation what we are going to do is we are going to truncate the length of the signal. Now why this finite word length effects are happening is because we know that in our computers or in systems there are finite length registers for example there is 8 bit register or a 16 bit register 16 bit, bit register likewise the length of your registers is fixed but 
sometimes when uh, doing the mathematical prob uh, mathematical calculations let, uh, such as addition or multiplication the result will be having an infinite length uh, that is after the decimal there is there is a large number numbers uh, occurring uh, in some cases so we need to round off these numbers or we need to truncate the length of this numbers in order to store this this numbers or this result into the fixed length registers okay so while doing this uh, process we are going to make some errors or we are going to uh, create some uh, errors here so that is called the finite word length effects so i hope this is clear that is due to the uh, finite length registers this finite length effects is happening in dsp okay so since we are using fixed length registers we cannot uh, make the length of registers uh, to increase we can only reduce the length of our result or mathematical sum to uh, make them fix into this registers right so that is why the finite word length effects is happen okay so let us see the two types of finite word length effects mainly there are two types truncation that is finite word length eff effects due to truncation and finite word length effects due to rounding in truncation what we are going to do is first we are going to calculate the length of the registers or we'll be knowing the length of the registers right so we will only select that much of numbers and we will simply cut off the rest of the numbers for example if our register is of size 10 see that uh, size of your register is 10 you are going to select only 10 numbers okay 1 2 we are all also uh, going to select this point 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so the, we will select up to 10 numbers and we are going to cut off these numbers simply. We are going to truncate it. That is called finite word length effects happening due to truncation. So that is simply truncation. We are going to cut off or we are going to eliminate these much of numbers. That is happening in truncation. Next we are going to see about a rounding. In rounding, we are going to uh, round off the numbers. That is here also, the length of register is 10. We are going to select 10 numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Till this uh, are the 10 numbers. Now, see the next number after your 10th number. If the number is greater than 5, add a 1 to the last number. If the number is less than 5, simply ignore these much of numbers. Okay, so this is, we are, with this we are doing in uh, simple mathematics also, right? That is, if the number is 8.6258, we want to, uh, we want to round off means, we will see whether uh, after this decimal, whether this number is, uh, that is after 6, if the number is greater than 5, we will add, we will make it as 8.7, otherwise we will simply remove it right this is this we are doing in general simple mathematics also so here what we are doing is we are going to select the 10 numbers we will see the 11th number if it is greater than 5 we will add a 1 here or if it is equal to 5 we will add a 1 here if it is less than 5 we will simply ignore the numbers so here if it is 5 we are going to make this is 4 I hope this is clear so we have round off the numbers and we can now eliminate these numbers. So this is our 10 uh, bit number now. Okay, so this is being done in rounding. So I hope this is clear. So the finite word length effects in DSP are happening mainly due to truncation and due to rounding. Okay, so uh, these are the important topics in finite word length effects in DSP. I hope this is clear. So uh, the DSP exams are going to happen. So if you are preparing for DSP, uh, this topic is very much important. I hope you have understood the topic finite word length effects in DSP. So if this video is useful for your preparation, please do give it a thumbs up and also share this video with all your friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thank you.